What's happening in northern Gaza proves Israel lied about everything. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar has been killed. He died not hiding behind civilians or disguised as a woman, as Israel apologists have been claiming for a year, but alone and in uniform, fighting Israeli forces with one arm blown off by tank fire. Sinwar's death will have no meaningful bearing on how Hamas or Israel conduct themselves. So it's funny to see Israel supporters puffing their chests like this was some kind of achievement. Israel is going to keep bombing hospitals, shooting kids in the head, intentionally starving civilians, and working to steal Palestinian land just like it was doing yesterday. And Palestinians are going to keep resisting this just like they were doing yesterday. Nothing about anything has changed. If Israel were actually killing all these people with the goal of destroying Hamas, then Sinwar's death might be significant. But Israel's goal is not destroying Hamas. Israel's goal is the ethnic cleansing and annexation of Gaza. This is public knowledge at this point, and is not seriously debatable. The only victory Israel's supporters can claim to have secured here is one of revenge which is just empty ego fluff that only feels real to highly egocentric people. You're even seeing Israel apologists trying to call Sinwar a coward for the way he died, which is absurd. He died fighting off soldiers, drones, and a fucking tank with one goddamn arm. Western men jerk off fantasizing about dying like that and then go on to die in nursing homes from Parkinson's complications with bellies full of vanilla custard. You don't get to call him a coward. No Hamas propaganda will ever make Hamas look more badass than Israel's footage of Sinwar throwing a stick at an IDF drone with his one remaining arm right before he died. I honestly can't believe they released that video. They may as well have put a red triangle pointing at the drone camera. Someone filming from their window in northern Gaza captured the moment when Israeli forces who had injured a child with a sniper drone launched an airstrike on the site after people ran to his rescue. Imagine being scared to run to the rescue of an injured child because you could be killed for it. That's the kind of nightmare Palestinians are facing in Gaza, one where a child injured by a flying robot could be used as bait to draw rescuers to the scene in order to bomb them. One where people have to watch their family members burn alive right in front of them. One where they have to listen to their disabled loved one get ripped apart by dogs in the next room while they're held at gunpoint by Israeli soldiers. One where they have to watch everything they've ever known incinerated all around them while the world watches and yawns. Fuck you if you're going along with this. Fuck you if you're ignoring this. Fuck you if you're trying to stop other people from opposing this. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. What's happening in northern Gaza conclusively disproves everything that Israel's defenders have been saying for the past year. The fact that Israel is now openly starving and killing Palestinians to force them south with the goal of stealing Palestinian land while rejecting any possibility of a hostage deal or a ceasefire disproves everything Israel apologists have been saying to justify the Israeli military's actions in Gaza. The killing was never about rescuing hostages. The killing was never about self-defense. The killing was never about fighting terrorism. The killing was never because of human shields. The killing was never because of Hamas terror bases hidden under hospitals, schools, mosques, and humanitarian aid facilities. The killing was never about beheaded babies, mass rapes, and other imaginary atrocities perpetrated on October 7th. The killing was never about October 7th at all. The killing was about stealing more Palestinian land, a project that Israel has been working on for generations. This is now a conclusively established fact, and it proves that every Israel apologist you've seen defending Israel's actions over the last year was either a useful idiot or a knowing genocide apologist. Nothing they said was true. 
It was all lies, told to justify stealing even more land from an indigenous population. And we were always headed to this point. At some point, they were going to have to stop lying about hostages and self-defense and human shields and taking out Hamas and just go, Haha, yeah, we're stealing a bunch of Palestinian land, actually. They've been lying for a whole year with Western help. I feel like we didn't make a big enough deal about the news that in 2022, U.S. intelligence assessed there was a 50-50 chance Russia could use a nuke in Ukraine. Empire apologists called us Putin propagandists for warning of this risk that whole time, and we were right. Everyone who spent 2022 warning that our rulers were flirting with nuclear Armageddon has been completely vindicated. And everyone who accused us of being useful idiots or Kremlin agents or ridiculous alarmists has been completely discredited. This is how reckless these people are. They gambled the life of every terrestrial organism on coin toss odds. And now they're taking things to the brink with Iran, where Israel could easily end up deploying a nuclear weapon if things get heated enough. These freaks cannot be allowed to remain in control of the fate of our world.